you ever wondered why a top moves like it does? Well, today I will be teaching you about the equations behind the motion of a symmetric top. To begin, let's look at our top. I've created a cone using vPython and marked the two major axes in the system. The red is the symmetry axis of the cone, which I will be calling E sub 3. And the blue here is the z-axis, which the top will be rotating around. I've also included the small yellow ball in order to mark where the center of mass of the cone lies, which is at 3 fourths the height of the cone. It's important to note that I fixed the tip of the cone and made it the origin of the body frame. This way, the contact force will drop out of the torque expression. Here, I've expressed the net torque, which comes solely from the gravitational forces. I've also expressed mass and radius in terms of the center of mass where r center of mass denotes the distance from the support point to the center of mass. Bearing in mind that the gravity vector is equal to negative g times the z-axis, and that the derivative of the angular momentum is equal to the net torque, we can write the derivative of the angular momentum in this way. The spinning top has three conserved quantities, angular momentum about the z-axis, angular momentum about the e sub 3 axis, and energy. If an object's potential energy does not change when the object is rotated about some axis, then the component of the angular momentum about that axis is conserved in time. We see this if we rotate the top about the z-axis, gravitational potential energy does not change. And, since the top is symmetric about the e sub 3 axis, we may also rotate the top about that axis without changing its potential energy. Let's now look at the final conserved quantity, energy. We'll first note the kinetic which is given here. But because the origin of the body frame is fixed in the inertial frame, r dot equals zero. So the kinetic energy simplifies to this. Potential energy comes solely from gravitational potential, which is mg times the height of the center of mass, which is given as r center of mass times e sub three dotted with the z axis. And when combined, we get the total energy. So then how does the top actually move? It will help if we deconstruct the angular velocity into three pieces, which I have diagrammed here. One piece lies on the E3 axis, another lies perpendicular to the Z E3 plane, and the final is parallel to the Z E3 plane. I've looked up the moments of inertia for a cone and given them here. I11 and I22 are equal, and for the remainder of this video, I will refer to them as I star. In these equations, H is the height of the cone, and r is the radius of the base of the cone. Plugging these into the equation we have for our energy, we now have energy equal to this. The angular momentum now takes this form. And the conservation of E sub 3 dotted with the angular momentum becomes I33 omega 3, which is equal to L sub 3. If we solve for omega 3, we see that it is constant with time. The conservation of the angular momentum about the z-axis now takes this form. We know that the z-axis dotted with u perpendicular will be zero, since the dot product of any two perpendicular vectors will always be zero. And using trig, we can find that the z-axis dotted with u parallel is equal to sine theta. Knowing these, we can solve for omega perpendicular. We may now use the equations we found for omega parallel, perpendicular, and omega three to find our final energy expression. This will also allow us to find the precessional angular frequency, or as I will call it, P dot. Now that we have a basic understanding of the mathematical equations that go into the motion of a top, I've pulled up my program which models the motion. It's important to note that this program is merely a model. It's not taken into account the friction the top would experience against a surface. Here, I have my initial conditions. To begin, We'll start with the basic precession. To do so, I have theta set at pi over 4 and theta dot set at 0. And I'll set the energy as 1 times the final energy expression we found. As the top begins to move, we can see that it is sweeping out a circle. And the only movement is in the phi direction. Theta is unchanging. This is what is called pure precession and is the simplest form of movement a top can make. Although pure precession is interesting, let's look at one other type of motion that a top can make, which will be due to the phenomenon called mutation. A 
In order to see the mutation of the top, I increased my energy by a factor of 1.04. The top falls, and then it recovers. But why doesn't the top completely fall? This is due to the conservation of angular momentum. As the top falls, the gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic. But because the angular momentum is constant, much of that energy is put towards precessional motion. Let's take another look at the motions of both precession and nutation. As a reminder, in precession, the top merely sweeps out a circle with no motion in the theta direction. But with nutation, the top drops and then recovers. And this is due to the conservation of angular momentum.